Hi everybody, my name is Emily and I work in adult services at the Fairfield County District Library. Today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about gratitude. What exactly it means to express gratitude, gratitude's role in our mental and physical well-being, and some tools to help train your brain to be more sensitive and connected to the things that you're grateful for around you. So. November is the official month of gratitude, of course, with it being the month that many people celebrate Thanksgiving. So I thought how appropriate, this would be a wonderful time to discuss what I've been recently learning about gratitude and its overall effect on our mental and physical health. Not to mention, with so many crazy things happening in the world lately, it's been significantly harder for a lot of people to keep their spirits up and their mental health in check. So I'm going to give you a few simple tools and some ideas of things that you can do to help maintain a healthy attitude. So what exactly is gratitude? Gratitude is more than saying thank you or I appreciate that. It's more of the feeling that you get when somebody does those things for you. When you say those words, it's that warm and fuzzy feeling that you feel like, I am so lucky to ha be surrounded by these people or to be given this. Just saying the words alone aren't going to give you the mental change that you would get as if you allow yourself to feel those feelings. I found this quote on mindful.org and I really liked it. It said, so what exactly does it mean to be grateful? Thankfully, it doesn't mean convincing yourself of some bogus notion that everything's fine and dandy. Living your life with gratitude means mindfully choosing to focus your time and attention on what you appreciate. So the goal is not to block out difficulties, but to approach those difficulties from a different perspective. Psychologists Robert A. Emons and Michael E. McCullough have done many studies over the years on gratitude and well-being. And these were some of the trends that they noticed while studying patients who were actively practicing gratitude. Psychologically, these patients that practiced gratitude had higher levels of positive emotions. They felt more alert, alive, and awake. They felt more joy and pleasure and they were more optimistic and happier. Not surprisingly, socially they found that these same patients felt more helpful, generous, and compassionate, more forgiving, more outgoing, and they felt less lonely and isolated. Here's where it gets really cool. In the patients that they studied, they found that there were also physical changes as well as psychological and social. They found that the people who were doing gratitude exercises had stronger immune systems, were less bothered by aches and pains, their blood pressure was lower, they exercised more and took better care of their health, and in result would sleep longer and feel more refreshed upon waking. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty amazing. <laughs> so how does practicing gratitude create these changes in our mind and body? Well, according to the Laboratory of Neuroimaging, the average person has about 70,000 thoughts each day. Most of these thoughts are very similar and simply repeat over and over in our heads. But there's one big problem with this. The vast majority of these thoughts are negative. With time and practice though, gratitude exercises neural pathways in your brain to make them more sensitive to positive thinking. Negative thought patterns are eventually swapped out with the more positive ones. You actually can change the way that your brain works, even make changes to your brain's chemistry. Anybody can do this at any stage in their life. It's pretty amazing. But it's not always a matter of simply telling our minds, don't think this negative thought now, because guess what our minds do? They start to think about that negative thought.
they just ignore the don't. As famed psychotherapist Carl Jung said, what you resist persists. So what can we do to encourage our brain to shift focus? Some things that you can do to quiet negative thoughts in your brain are meditation. Meditation is very useful for calming the brain and tuning into your body and surroundings. It helps take your mind off of what has already happened and what is to come that you're anxious about, and it brings you to the present. Meditation often focuses on calm and even breathing. There are so many types of meditation, and you can even find guided ones online for free. Some are even gratitude-focused. But meditation is a wonderful tool. If that feels like too much, breathing exercises alone are incredibly useful. I've recently been reading about the vagus nerve, and without getting too deep into the science of it all, I've learned it plays a huge role in our mental health. Breathing exercises help stimulate the vagus nerve, specifically on the exhales, and it's really good for anxiety and depression. Some other things that help feelings of gratitude come to the surface are spending time in nature, playing music, drawing or writing, or simply making things with your hands. Art in general is very good at bringing you into the present moment. I know not everyone enjoys all of these specific things, but doing things that you enjoy doing with your hands and your body open you up to the feeling of gratitude tremendously. The key is to make time for them and to allow yourself to get lost in them for a little while. If you find it's hard for you to feel motivated or to feel like you don't have enough time to really get into the things that you enjoy doing, I would suggest trying some mindfulness exercises. I will be putting out a book list later this month that will have quite a few books on the topic of mindfulness. Sensory awareness exercises are a type of mindfulness exercise. A simple one that I use goes like this. You take a few deep breaths, get your heart to slow down a little, and keeping your breathing steady, you look around and acknowledge five things that you can see with your eyes. After you've done that, then you acknowledge four things around you that you can touch or feel and go ahead and feel them. Then acknowledge three things around you that you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. This exercise grounds you and helps calm an anxious mind. You can also use sensory awareness by lighting a certain candle that smells great to you or creating a playlist that sounds so good to your ears and just taking the time to sit and smell or listen just to appreciate those things and really let yourself feel thankful for it. Body awareness exercises are also really important and great for calming your mind. Stretching, dancing, yoga, massage, those are all good ways to increase your body awareness. Another great tool is keeping a journal. It helps you reflect on things and set goals. It gives you a sense of organization and control over your thoughts. It helps you notice patterns. Um, a gratitude journal specifically would be one that highlights things that make you feel grateful at the end of each page. Um, you could jot notes down throughout the day. Um, those are really useful tools. I'll talk more about gratitude writing exercises in just a minute here. Um, another really important thing to do if you want to shift focus from the negatives is simply being kind to yourself and being kind to others. Some other useful tools that I'm going to talk a little bit more about in, on the next slide. Um, tracking your mood is incredibly beneficial to your mental health. Now, these are such big benefits because when it's done over periods of time, it can get you to know yourself better. And as you start to see patterns of what triggers different emotions or moods, you better know how to handle them. You can begin noticing trends like, it seems like I usually feel down on days when I haven't spent any time outside. Or 
Whenever I see this person, I feel wonderful the rest of the day. There are many ways to track your moods. Some people use mood tracker journals where they jot notes through the day. There are also mood tracker printables that you can get from online. Some are free and some cost. Some people create their own rating scale and just mark in the bottom of their journal each day or once a week. It's really about finding what works best for you. But I'm going to show you guys um, some mobile apps that you can track your mood on. The first one I want to tell you about is called Moodily. You can log how you feel at different points in the day and you mark what you were doing when you were feeling that way. It's very simple. It's free. Mood Flow is a free simple tracker that also has a gratitude journal tool. If you don't like keeping a physical journal with you and you wanted to do a gratitude journal, Mood Flow would be a really great option for you. The third is called Mood Panda. It's free, very simple. Um, you track your mood on a sliding scale and it shows trends over time. It's really cute. It shows little panda faces for each mood. It's adorable. Um, there's also mood patterns. This one is stands out because it's really secure. So if you're um, if you worry about people getting on your phone or looking into your things, this this is an encrypted mood tracking app and you have to create a pin to even get into it. Even if it, your phone's unlocked, you can't get into the app without a pin. Um, so that's kind of a neat feature, but it's basic within that. Um, the last one I'm going to show you or tell you about is called Dalio. This one has a free trial, but it does cost a little bit of money um, each year. I think you can pay monthly or by the year. Um, I added this one on here because instead of identifying feelings with words, in this app, you can describe your moods by choosing from a list of videos of people feeling different emotions and making different expressions on their faces. So people who um, do better with, that are more visual learners rather than the other, um, this would be a really good app for you. Um, it's also neat because you can set goals and reminders on this one. And this actually does have the option of adding a pin to your account as well. Here's where things get interesting. <laughs> you know how I told you about gratitude writing exercises before? Well, I wanna challenge you all to do a little exercise with me this month since it's the month of gratitude. If you haven't heard of a gratitude jar, this is what I'd like for us to do. There's different styles. Basically you take a jar or a vessel of some sort and you can decorate it however you want. One of these just has a picture frame with a quote next to it. You can make it look however you want. But the point is to each day write on a small piece of paper at least one thing that you're thankful for or that you're grateful for. It's a really simple exercise. Anybody can do it, young or old. Um, it, it's just a way to kind of get you thinking as you're going through your day-to-day -day life. What is something I can put in my gratitude jar later? And it gets your mind off of those negative thought cycles. Um, you don't have to be grateful for anything big and profound for it to mean something or to be able to go into the jar. Um, it could be today I'm grateful that I can breathe out of my nose because last week I was sick and I couldn't. Or it could be today I'm grateful that I didn't watch the news because I'm in a much better mood <laughs> from not watching it. Um, it. It can be anything. It can be big or small. Um, you can get your family involved in it. You can get friends involved in it. Um, it can be something big or small. It can be, I, I, I'm grateful that I have a roof over my head or I am grateful for this person. Um, it's just a really simple, cool thing. And like I said, 
It doesn't have to be a jar. It can look however you want. I don't care if you use a vase. You can use something just laying around your house. You can use a box of some sort. It can be a cardboard box. You can make it look cool. It could be an emptied out drawer in your sideboard or a kitchen canister. You guys all know the cookie tins. We use them for everything else. That could be your gratitude vessel. You could use a lunchbox. Here we have Bob Ross. We don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. He's a really grateful person. He's super awesome. <laughs> so I want to challenge you guys to think of at least one thing you're grateful for, for 30 days. And if on top of that, you want to track your mood in some way, I think that that's a really great way to become more mindful of the way that your brain works and get to know yourself a little bit better. I'm gonna leave you with, with this quote from Osho. Do you have a choice of growing flowers or growing weeds? What are you going to choose? Thanks, guys, for listening. And I hope to see your gratitude jars this month.